Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of everything that happened in the Premier League since the international break, which um, in one way there was a lot of things happening, <laughs> pendulum swings in the relegation battle for sure. There was of course uh, the what seems like a pretty side, but we said that before in the Champions League race, hence I'm wearing Spurs. Um, and of course there was a big title clash yesterday in the afternoon, a title clash that lived up to everything you would expect from such a match. As I say in the title, it was intensity, it was quality. These are at the moment, and there's no doubt in my mind, the two best teams in Europe. Absolutely. This rivalry over the past three to four years has superseded the Classico as the best, the must watch game in Europe at the moment. And what I actually do enjoy most about this rivalry is A, that both coaches are not only great coaches, but both uh, have a proactive style of play, although different, but uh, both are forward thinking, attacking, attack mind, mind when the coaches that uh, one is, you know, more for uh, the speedy attacks going forward, the other one more the um, creative build-up play. Both teams assembled in a very sustainable manner. I mean, you see bits and pieces can be taken out. And most importantly, this is a rivalry that is not built upon hate, but there's mutual respect. I absolutely love that after every game between those two, yes, during the game, Everything, all bets are off. I mean, they are yelling, they're screaming, they're moaning, uh, whatever. After the game, they are always uh, respect each other. I mean, the, the bear hug that uh, Klopp and Guardiola gave each is themselves after the game. I mean, Guardiola wanted to head straight for, 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 for my dressing room. But, you know, then uh, it was really, you could see the mutual respect. And the players do not hate each other, but they are giving it their all. And I think this is what, to me, an absolute intense rivalry is made of. But to me, the two other big stories, and we'll talk, I'll talk a whole lot about this game because this is basically why I decided last weekend not to do anything about Premier League because all the build up for this game. But the best thing about this game is that we get it again next weekend. So you probably will get another Premier League uh, England review because it's in the FA Cup semi final. So we'll talk about that. But as I said, there are two more uh, major stories of the runs before we run through the results. The one is that Spurs are suddenly on fire. You know that before the international break was win-lose, 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 win-lose. Now they won games in, in a row and not only won the games in a row, but by a lot. I mean, rolling over uh, Newcastle 5-1, going to Aston Villa, 4-0 win. Uh, Spurs are on a roll and seemingly uh, what the, the transfer dealings might actually be this winter transfer window. What Spurs got in, it was maybe a little bit disappointing. Bentancur and Kulsevsky, it really works out well for them because now they have attacking options. And with Conte, of course, a coach who had now the time to work with his team. Although I'm not sure how much he could work because, you know, uh, international break, most of the players were probably on the international break. And on the flip side, this international break didn't do Arsenal any favors. Yes, injuries, blah, 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 blah. But Arsenal have lost now twice in, in, in a row in a rather embarrassing manner. And suddenly where you thought Arsenal might actually pip everyone else to this fourth spot, it looks now very much like Spurs. But I'm not declaring Spurs in any way going there because I've seen this season so far. When you think that one is on, on, on the roll, they, they completely go crumbling. So uh, it's still buckle your seat, CC belts. Arsenal's schedule, though, with the makeup games uh, is interesting. And at the moment, it really seems that it might all come down to a North London Derby. You know, the one that has been moved, although form wise, it might not. It absolutely might not get to that. So uh, just that. And then, of course, we need to talk the relegation scrap where um, Everton lost in the midweek to Burnley 3-2 after being 2-1 up at the half. Um, and in a really embarrassing way, where we even Sean Dyche, uh, may, may, may say, those, this squad does not know how to win a big game because they have never been in such a situation. And with that loss, Everton for the first time, uh, not only by the book, but also, also by Model was down was a relegation candidate and then last week and then on the past weekend suddenly shot in the arm uh 
win over United and Burnley losing to Norwich and suddenly Everton look uh, a whole lot more relieved. But we'll get to that towards uh, the end of it. Uh, quick thought uh, before I go into, into games on Spurs. Uh, not only am, am, am I wearing Spurs uh, over the international break, I was all, all, I was thinking, I have had this long thought, which team in each league is closest to Lusk? And I came to the conclusion, Spurs and Lusk share many things. The last championship is ages ago. There was a golden period where uh, they broke through. Um, but especially the Spursiness is also very much Lusk. Flattering to deceive. You think everything, everything is going fine and then at the end, no, just not. Just not quite. Something is always going going wrong. And I think so, therefore, therefore I actually suddenly feel quite a kinship between uh, Spurs, uh, to, towards Spurs, just because of that. Okay, uh, briefly through all three games. So last weekend, honestly, to me, um, apart from the last two games, which I think were the main storyline, that Spurs uh, destroyed Newcastle 5-1 and Crystal Palace on the next day, absolutely rocked Arsenal to the, to the core, winning 3-0. Uh, the big story was, of course, Brentford going to Chelsea and absolutely destroying them. And, you know, this was post-international uh, break blues. We had that before, especially with Chelsea, uh, but other teams. Uh, this might have been the best time for, for them to play. Chelsea took a wonderful lead through Rüdiger, but then in a short space after, this, after the break, Brentford uh, turns off 4-1 and even Eriksson scores again. I mean, he's he's on a roll and he's very much behind uh, the rise of Brentford again because suddenly Brentford is really... Brentford has actually been the best team over uh, these past two, two, two weeks, racking up wins that were not expected and really um, uh, putting a stamp on their uh, rather successful season. I think with Eriksson, they now have this creative option in the center, which makes them a much, 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 much better team. Uh, as the prelude to the big title clash, Liverpool won 2-0. Well, Watford City 2-0 at Burnley, so was not much happening there. Uh, United getting a very lucky 1-1 against Leicester. Leicester also a team a bit on the up. Uh, and, and you see Everton losing to West Ham. And then, as I said, I already saw, talked about Spurs uh, and Palace. Most crucially, um, after this round, it was that um, the chances for the championship were still 64 City, uh, 36 Liverpool. And at that time, I, I already alluded to it in my Champions League review, um, Liverpool, during the midweek, had overtaken City in my ratings as the best team in Europe. Not in all the ratings, but overall, uh, taking bookies, taking the um, uh, ELO rating and taking the SBR rating, Liverpool were suddenly coming out, out, out on top. So narrowing gap for sure. And as I said, uh, Spurs at that point still not in the fourth spot, but still not quite in the comfortable space because Arsenal, um, there was still a head-to-head, -head, blah, blah, blah. Arsenal having a game came in hand, although against Chelsea. So you, you didn't know it on the bottom. Everton sitting at 39%, Burnley 55%. Then in the midweek, as I said, uh, postponed game, Burnley beat Everton coming back. Uh, you know, this was from a Boxing Day fixture. <laughs> yeah, crazy, 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 crazy. So Burnley coming back to, to win that one. And suddenly things switched around. At this moment, Everton a 53% chance of being relegated as Burnley had only 4 40%. Uh, only a point between the two of them with Burnley, the, the still the easier program going forward. However, um, it remains to be seen how it will proceed from uh, there. And then on um, this weekend, um, as I said, the Everton United that game, I actually watched it. It doesn't speak for the quality. Yes, it is kind of during my lunch break where I usually take a nap, but uh, you know, I was lying on the, on the couch, the game was on, I fell, fell twice asleep, but I saw the goal. Uh, and I think Everton really dug in and fought. They did what uh, everyone thought they cannot do. And this, uh, I talked to Andy, who is a fellow Everton, who is a, not fellow, who is an Everton supporter. So I, I, I really think that Everton is not a team that should get relegated. This is one of those, uh, to me, if there was, um, when I said uh, in the early 2000s, they were talking about the seven sisters in Italian football, um, which to a degree are still e e exist uh, in the same way. So that um, 
the big three, then the Roman teams, and then it was back then Parma, Fiorentina, now it's Fiorentina, Inde, but you have Atalanta instead of Parma. So uh, there's still a seven. For me, Everton always made the top seven teams in history in England. Easily. There's no, there was no doubt in mind. Uh, the, fun, the fun thing back then, there were no, the, no the silly teams. But I think uh, at the moment, if you would call me the, the big seven teams, I mean, they call about the top six, but Everton is to me, to me, they are the next team. Top six and then Everton should be, is for me no, no doubt I mind that they, they would be the next team. I know Newcastle fans and Villa fans maybe have something to say about that too, but uh, that's the way how I always thought about them. So for me, Everton going, going down would be a big disaster. Hence, they dug in. Um, I'm not sure if Frank Lampard really was the best appointment, but you know, uh, it's it's also hard to just come in mid mid season in a crisis situation. But I think the whole rhetoric that he puts out there, I'm not sure if this is what the team needs. In any case, they win one nil against United. A United that looked anemic. A United, and I'm getting so tired of talking about United. You know, when there was the social era, uh, era, and you really knew that this team is being held back by the by the coach. Now they have a coach, but the team does doesn't doesn't accept them. It seems like the team is not united at all it is everything but and you can see this in the frustrations and of course the goal is a deflected goal by harry Maguire, who is kind of the butt of all jokes at the at at, at the moment that the cristiano ronaldo doesn't uh was kind of an invisible player uh the only thing that he did was uh slap the phone out of uh, a fan's hand which yeah he police investigation blah 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 Inviting the fan to Old Trafford, hey, 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 hey. I mean, if you're an Everton fan, uh, it's the first thing you want to do. So, really, uh, Manchester United is a team to forget. We know that Eric Ten Hag is seemingly the one coming. I don't want to make any speculation anymore because I think this team needs, needs to be blown up. It absolutely needs to be blown up, built from, from the ground, from a youth acad, acad academy, and, you know, uh, go back to the basics in many, many ways. And I'm not sure if Ten Hag will get the time. And also if United have the same setup. Because, as I said, Ajax coaches don't travel well. Because Ajax coaches are always top. They get the best talent in their league. Um, they all play the same style. This is something that needs to build. I have my I have my reservations about Ten Hag. But again, Everton getting a huge win. Um, Brighton also. <laughs> Stunning Arsenal. 2-1 away from home. Chelsea, with all the frustration kind of losing to Brentford, losing to Real Madrid, look, look, looking like everything going, going, going to the wrong direction. No, Southampton blowing past them. And yeah, Southampton also, Ralf Hasenhüttl, uh, he, who is now in the conversation. I don't think he will become, although I think I would like the appointment of Austrian national team coach because I see seemingly he wants to have a less stressful uh, life. I think Ralf Hasenhüttl would be almost my ideal candidate. For that, I don't think he will become, and they cannot afford them. Uh, but Southampton has a penchant. Uh, either they play very well, or they get completely hammered. Um, I saw Villa against Spurs, uh, especially the second half. I mean, I saw the hal 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 of first half. Yes, early goal by Son. Um, but then, you know, Lloris needed to make a few saves. But uh, right after the half, I think it was Kulusevski uh, who made it then 2 0. And from that moment on, uh, it was just one way traffic. Yeah, Kulusevski. Then Kane sets up uh, Son. Of course, Kane is instrumental in the build up. I personally like as a player Son more, but the best player on Spurs squad is definitely Kane, uh, who is an absolute a brilliant, brilliant player. On the, that's going as Kulusevski also sets up Son for his, his hat trick. Those uh, clinically is, I think, how I would describe uh, Spurs at the moment. Can they keep it up? We have, have, have to see. Another big result in the relegation scrap was, of course, um, that uh, um, Burnley loses 2 0 at Norwich, where they just got the big win. With a win, they could have kept up a little bit pressure, but I think this is the one where it kind of tails off. But we gotta talk City, City Liverpool. Um, as I said, brilliant game. However, if you're a City fan, you probably feel that you should have won this game, especially after this first, first half, where time and time again, uh, City could play passes over the high line of Liverpool and, Liv and Liverpool could not cope with it at all. It was, uh, it was rather staggering. Klopp 
clearly not having the right ta 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 tactics. Although I think at the beginning it was Liverpool started out a little a little bit stronger, but then De Bruyne uh, deflected a shot after I think it was um, Gareth who had an absolute sitter. De Bruyne makes it one 0 with a deflect deflected shot. Uh, but Liverpool come 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 back and uh, bring an attacking move. There was a uh, offside by Mane, but since it was defended out, it didn't count. Then a long ball in, I think from Ro Robertson to Alexander Arnold, who then doesn't take the shot, but plays it back to Jota, who, 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 who can make it 1 1. Also, a shot very nicely placed, very close to the goalkeeper's body, so he has a hard time saving it. Um, and just when you thought that game might turn the other way, no. City really uh, putting Liverpool in trouble. And you could see Liverpool were rattled the entire first half. Uh, they were not like this united team. They were positively rattled and and wondering what's, hap what's happening to us. Yes, they even had some good chances uh, in the sense. And, you know, Edison uh, gets for me the, the the fridge of the month moment when he just clears nonchalantly the ball off the goal, go, uh, goal line because I think he saw Jota coming. It was one of those those ones where you really don't know what's happening. But you know, I think the Bruyne hit the uh, hit the, the outside of the box. Cancelo, I think, had the shot. Uh, there were many many chances, and Allison had his hand full. And then uh, just when you thought they had clear clear corner, suddenly Cancelo plays a wonderful ball to uh, Gabriel Jesus, who was waiting outside of the box. This was almost planned in in in, in a way. You saw all the city defenders. Um, Standing in the in, in the in the box, still running out, but since the ball came came to us, they were not offside. It was brilliantly played, and then a very difficult finish because Alice is coming out. There was only one place where Jesus could um, put it, and he makes it two-one at the half. An absolutely deserved lead for City at this point, who were the better better team, and I think who if they would have won the won this game uh, game said said a match for 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 them in a title fight. Um, so. Liverpool clearly, clearly rattled. And uh, starting uh, Jesus was seemingly a masterstroke for Klopp, uh, for Guardiola at, at the moment. However, right after the half, Liverpool come out, completely changed team, and within a minute, Salah plays a wonderful ball into Mane, and it's 2-2. Then, I think for the next 15, 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes, I would say that Liverpool was the better team. They kind of acquitted themselves for this rather horrible half an hour they had had for first half to kind of pull things a little bit more level uh but then sterling scores a goal that would have made it three three two um which on one side you know yes for me it is easier to like liverpool than it's to like manchester city i don't i don't make any bones about it even though Man manchester city have probably my favorite player in the premier league with kevin de bruyne who was easily the best man on the pitch uh, so, you know, a give and take a little bit. It's really, really in interesting that a team that I don't root for have a player that I absolutely love. Uh, but that's De Bruyne and Manchester City to, to me. If that goal would have stood by Sterling, I think we would have gotten an even greater banger. But since that goal was not given, you know, Jota came off, then, uh, you know, Mares came, 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 came off for Sterling. But I felt then at that point, both teams kind of said, yeah, let's settle for a draw. And the, and the game always had draw written all over. But I think if that score, uh, goal uh, stands, I think we would have gotten a much more frantic finish to the match. Also, as we said, I think Thiago and Fabinho probably could have walked. Um, they were really, really not in there. And then, of course, Maris misses the huge chance with the last kick of the game. Uh, at a point where, as I said, the game then petered out a little bit, but um, could have very well uh, won it there for City. And I think if City wins this game, they win the title. Liverpool almost needed to win this game because of their schedule coming up. I think Liverpool, we've seen the standings that their chances of winning the title have slightly improved because they got the more points now. But when I look at the remaining schedule, it seems City, I mean, City cannot flinch at all. So uh, let, let, let's look at the standings. Um, as I said, 60-40 now. Because Liverpool got a point at City where they would have, were uh, by the model, uh, kind of expected to lose. Also, Spurs now 72% in the Champions League. A huge turnaround. Look at the bottom. Everton only 33%. Still not comfy, but you have a four-point cushion. 
It may just be enough, but you know, uh, Everton have, have also a really, really tough schedule. One that I didn't don't necessarily would want to have, uh, but you know, a little bit of breathing room. I also want to point out again, if Burnley could convert some of those draws into wins, I think they would be in a much, much different uh, position. That's uh, definitely the case there. Uh, as for the upcoming games, uh, we have a kind of truncated round on the weekend uh, because, you know, we have an FA Cup semi-final. We'll see, 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 see that, in, that in a bit. But, you know, uh, not really a great outstanding game to be had there, I, I want to say. Uh, I think Spurs Brighton is almost the one where you want to see because uh, Spurs at the moment is fun to watch. And West Ham Burnley, Newcastle Leicester, I think is, is, is the best match there. But as I said, we have an FA Cup semi-final. Um, yeah, Saturday, 4.30, mark your kaka calendars. I will not be watching Bundesliga at that time. I may not even be watching last because City against Liverpool is playing in an FA Cup semi-final. What better way to do it? And then Chelsea against Crystal Palace. A tie that seemed so clear, but you know, I think of, um, before the weekend, I will say, oh, Crystal Palace might give Chelsea something. I think Chelsea is maybe come, coming around, but let's see if they playing midweek, Crystal Palace or not. So yeah, long video on all the happenings in the Premier League, but I think it was definitely worth, worth it. And as I said, the City Liverpool rivalry ra is, is up with me there with the El Clasico of the, uh, about 10 years ago as the must-watch moment at this time. So uh, just saying that. Let me know what you thought about everything happening in Premier League uh, these days. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.